Hello and welcome back to this, the fourth part in our tutorial series looking on linear workflows within Renderman Studio. In the previous installment we actually had a look at correcting images as part of textures or materials within both the Maya version of our texture editor or our material editor here and also in Slim. So we had a look at both the Slim and the Maya version of how we make sure that we have correct linear, linearized, not an easy word to say, linearized images. Okay. In this installment, we're having a look at correcting color swatches. What I'm referring to here as a color swatch is this. It's a color within our material editor. Okay. Now, this has been confusing to some people and confused me in the past. Let's just look at how we do this. Along the way, I'll show you a couple of tips and tricks, which hopefully will improve your workflow in Maya generally as well. A couple little things I've picked up along the way just while developing this tutorial. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is have a unique material on this. So I'm just going to put a Maya map material here and let's just call it swatch so I'll know where to find it just in case swatch there we go right now I'd like to actually use a color which is similar to our rendered colors let's just do a quick render here uh, the images which we were looking at before were of some some chilies okay which we applied to these two spheres um, I'd like to actually get materials that are based somewhere around the middle of this chilly red color here. Quite a pleasing color. So a couple of ways I can do this. Within the general color picker, I could try selecting my um, eyedropper, but I can't actually select anything here because I don't actually see it on screen. Now something you may have noticed from, oops, let me just select a color here so we go there. Okay, I'm going to bring in here, just bring in here my Photoshop window. Okay, so anytime I click here, oops, I don't want that one yet. I'm going to show you that in a second. Single click here will just bring up um, my eyedropper and another selection method here, all these selection methods here. But I can only select within. The interface of Maya. As soon as I go over here, I lose it. See that? It's going from crosshair to no crosshair. That's quite unfortunate. There's a way of doing this. If I select by clicking with the left click within my interface and I hold down shift and then I move outside to the color that I'm looking for, in this case this color here, you can see it's actually kept my um, my crosshairs here, can you see that? Okay, so now when I release, I actually get that color. So that's quite a, a clever little trick which you can do. The way which you do this again is eyedropper, click to select on your interface, hold down shift, and move to somewhere out here. And it keeps the color picker active. It hasn't dropped it. Okay, so I'm gonna pick one of these colors here for a nice red, somewhere around there, and there we go. Okay, that's one way which we can do it, which is a nifty little trick which I use quite a lot now that I've discovered how to do it. Second way which we can do it is, I'll just go to the second object here. Um, what we can do is, let's just put another material here. I'll call this, oh, actually I don't call it anything, I'll just call it, yeah. Here we go, um, swatch two. Okay, now a single click brings up just this selection here, but a quick double click brings up this color picker, which allows me to actually load an image. So I'm going to load an image, and no prizes for guessing what image it will be. It'll be the image which we've been looking at here, so source images, 8-bit, no, let me just see, all image files. Yeah. All 
all files. So we get TGA open. It won't let me actually load that. It'll load a JPEG. So from this, I'm going to save a JPEG. Save as and save this as a JPEG. Just a standard JPEG, 8 bit per channel. Okay. Now, when I go to load an image, I get my chilies. I can load that and I can choose from within here somewhere. So I can choose around here, which is roughly where I did it before. So you can see these are different ways that you can actually use images to um, select colors. Very, very useful. Okay. Now, that having been said, let's see what happens when we render these, because it's all in the rendering. Let's go and re-render our scene here. Now, that's rather disappointing. This color here doesn't appear to relate to this at all well. Why is this? The reason is, as it stands, certainly with Maya 2013 and with Renderman Studio uh, 4, I believe we're good at the moment, um, the color picker is not actually working in a linear fashion. And the swatch is not linear. So what we need to do is we need to go into our hypershade and put a gamma correction in to actually make it work. Now let's see how this works. If we go to Window, Rendering Editors, and Hypershade. Hypershade will open up for me here between, between windows. And let me just get it down to a manageable size. OK. Here's my swatch. And I will expand out its network. OK. What I want to do is put in a node here, which is a gamma correction node. It's a standard Maya node. So if I just enter here in the top window here, G, A, M, and I get gamma correct. There's my gamma correct node. Lovely. Not so bad so far. Let's just drag it down here for a moment. With the gamma cor node correct, with the gamma node selected, excuse me, I'm just going to go and select the material color. Okay, and we can see the material color is actually here. It's one of those materials which we had selected most recently. Okay, so that's the material color. And let's go back to our swatch, to our material. And the surface color, I want to actually hook this into the surface color. So the easiest way I can do this, middle mouse drag onto the surface color. And we'll see now this connection. So if I go back to the swatch material and map the inputs and outputs, you can see the gamma correct is connected into the color. Now, if I go to render this again, let me just find my it window. Put this always on top, always on top, and re render it. There is no difference. Why is this? I put a gamma correct node, but what I haven't done is I haven't actually put any values into the gamma correction. Now, the gamma, the gamma node actually allows us to change the gamma for red, green, and blue. So we need to set it three times. Now, we know from previously that the gamma, which is applied to our textures, is 2.2. What we need to do is bring it back from there, so we need to put in the inverse. Okay? So the inverse of 2.2, I know for a fact, not that I'm a mathematical genius, but I've done it lots of times before, is 0.454. So we'll copy this value, Control C, Control V, and Control V. This gives us the inverse gamma and gets us back to where it should be. It basically linearizes the swatch. Let's go Control and right click, re render. And we'll now see that indeed this sphere here is rendering very close to the color that we need here. 
Okay, so that's actually dealing with a swatch within the Maya material editor and attributes. Okay, let's just have a quick look at within Slim. Now, Slim works in general in a linear method. Okay, so it's actually working from the get go in a linear way. So let's just get a surface here. Let's, um, let's go for a new surface, surface uh, materials. Okay, GP surface. And uh, let's call this Slim Swatch. Just so I don't lose it. Okay. Now, what color value do I put in here? Into the RGB. Well, there isn't a color picker here, but there is a color picker within here. I actually have this open down here. So you can see within um, within it, holding on the space bar will bring up the status. And when I move, you're actually getting the X and Y coordinates and then the R, G, B and A color values. So the color value I'm going to feed into Slim here is the color value I actually have here. We can get it from other places, but this just works for me, okay? So that's 0 0.0754 for the red. Zero seven five four and point zero zero three for the green and point zero one five for the blue. Should be getting something very close, and indeed it looks close. Now, watch this. This is all we actually need. We don't need to linearize or do anything else now. With the slim swatch selected, just attach a surface. And I'll now go to re render. And yes, we're seeing the results, but what's going on here? Why is it looking like this? You may remember from the previous tutorial. Let's just have a quick look. The reason why it's looking like this is we've got a lot of reflection going on here. So let's turn down our specular gain to zero and re-render. And there we go. So that's pretty much what we had previously. So when you're working in Slim, you don't need to gamma correct. When you're working in Hypershade and Maya, you do. And we looked previously at how we actually correct for images both in Maya and in Slim. Okay, I'm going to leave it here for the moment. Hopefully you found these interesting and useful, and I'll come back to you soon with some more tutorials. Thank you very much for your time and attention.